Hello, good evening, and welcome to the club vocab half term vocab vocabulary quiz. Be good if I could say it. <laughs> uh, welcome. It's lovely to have all of you here today. So if you have not been at Club Vocab over the last five weeks, um, then you might find some of these questions a bit confusing, uh, but don't worry, uh, you can still have a go. I'll explain how the quiz works in just a moment. Um, but if you have been coming to Club Vocab for the last five weeks, um, then all of these questions are drawn from the different things that we've learned and covered over the last five weeks. So if you have been before, you might remember when we learned these things. And if you haven't been before, then this will give you a really good indication of the sort of thing that we cover in Club Vocab. And maybe you'll like to join us next half term. We start back in two weeks, two weeks today, in fact. So how will it work? Well, there will be three rounds of five questions in each and answers will be given after each round. Okay, pretty straightforward. So what do you need to know? Well, if you're participating live, then you can share your ideas in the chat box um, or you can write them down on your sheet. You've all had access to an answer sheet where you can fill in your answers. You don't have to use that though. A piece of plain paper is also fine. You can use the chat freely, but please try and keep it focused on what we're doing in the quiz. And breakout rooms are optional, but you are, I, I thoroughly encourage you to go into those breakout rooms and uh, discuss your answers, talk to other people. There, are Those of you that are here live today are tuning in from all across the United Kingdom. So it's really nice to go in and, and work with someone who could be hundreds of miles away. If you are watching this later by video replay link or on YouTube, then you can share your ideas in the video comments, which is right down underneath the video description. Or you can just write them down on your piece of paper or your sheet. You won't get to go into the breakout rooms, but you will get to pause the quiz at any point if you need a bit of extra time. Okay, are we ready? Let's go. So, question number one. A soiree is A, an Indian headdress used on celebratory occasions, or B, an evening party or social gathering, especially one held for a particular purpose. Do you think it is A or B? I think this was a nice easy one to get started. Well done Haiyang, well done Eshal and Aish. Well done, Andrea. Oh, Andrea, well done. <laughs> okay, we're going to move quickly through these questions today. Question number two. My interest was blank by the description. What best fits the gap? Is it A, perturbed, or B, peaked? One thing I will add is that if you come across a word in this quiz and you haven't been coming to Club Vocab for the last five weeks and you think that sounds like an interesting word, jot the word down and then you can look it up in a thesaurus afterwards. Okay, let's get on with question number three. What does the fon part of the word euphonious mean? Does it mean A, sound, B, talk, or C, phone? This is uh, a bit of a bit of Latin skill coming in here. Or is it Greek or both? Greek. <laughs> Lots of you are correct, but a little hint for you. If you think about what the word homophone means or the word phonics, have a little think about that. That might give you a clue. Okay, 
Uh, let's move on to number four. What does amuse bouche roughly translate to? Now, when we were in class, uh, we we found out that this uh, is it's a, a, a tiny course that's served um, in a restaurant. Maybe a little bit like a palate cleanser. And we know it comes from French, but what does it roughly translate to? Jaden is along the right lines. You've got the first part right. So what do the two words translate to? Okay, good skills, everybody. Well done, Fletcher. Uh, let's move on to number five. Where would you find a stylograph? Now, I should caveat this with where would you most likely find a stylograph? Would it be A, on an escritoire, or B, next to a diadem? Now, escritoire and diadem are two words, as well as stylograph, that we covered in club vocab. So for you guys, it will be quite easy, but it might be trickier for everybody else. change your mind when you find out what escritoire and diadem mean but we'll come to that when we do the answers so uh, what happens now is we go into the breakout rooms it's a smaller zoom room with three or four people and you can discuss your answers so far and also what you think this word means unscrupulous now you might like to jot that down I will give the definition of unscrupulous when I give the answers so whilst you're jotting that down, I will set up a breakout room. Okay, the breakout rooms are open and you have got just over a minute to go in, speak to your roommates and decide what you think unscrupulous means.
everyone. Welcome back from your breakout rooms. I hope you found them a great opportunity to discuss your answers and to try and decide what the word unscrupulous means. Now, what we usually do at this point in my classes is if there was somebody in your breakout room who did a really good job, was really positive or had some great ideas or really good answers, uh, then let me know who they are in the chat and um, I will give them a big shout out. So I'll do that in just a moment um, after. Oh, look, they're coming through now. I'm going to read them out now. I usually wait until after the answers. Uh, Camilla says, Isa did a great job. Well done, Isa. Charlotte and Thomas said, Fletcher did a great job. Um, Isa said, Camilla was really good. Sophie says, Fletcher was really good. Um, Hayang says, Camilla was really good. So well done to all of you, the nominees and um, the those that nominated them. So here are our answers. Number one, the answer was A, an evening party or social gathering, especially one held for a particular purpose, and that was soiree. It comes from the French, from the uh, word evening. Number two was B, peaked. Uh, it means to sort of grab your interest. Number three, A, was sound. So the phon part of euphonious, which means a sweet sound, um, or a sweet sounding thing. It's an adjective, uh, means sound. And number four, amuse bouche roughly translates to amusing the mouth or amuse the mouth. The bouche part means mouth. Uh, number five, A, on an escritoire. So a stylograph is a fancy type of pen and an escritoire is a desk type bureau thing. And uh, a diadem is actually a crown. So you might find a stylograph next to a crown, but you're much more likely to find it on an escritoire. And finally, unscrupulous. Having or showing no moral principles, not honest or fair. Um, that is what the word unscrupulous means. You may have heard it in the news. I think it's being used quite frequently to describe what might be going on in politics. Okay, so let's see, how did you do out of five or out of six if you include unscrupulous? So, uh, well done to Isa, well done Fletcher, well done Jaden, well done Camilla, <laughs> well done Sophie, well done Hyang, that's good, that's a good score. Jaden guessed the last one, well done if it was a good, a lucky guess. Uh, so just a reminder to everybody that uh, the base score that we're all aiming for is just showing up and having a go. OK, so whatever your score is, well done. OK, it's a good start. And I will add that most of you were not in club vocab over the last five weeks. So this is going to be a particularly difficult quiz for you. Right, let's move on. So number six, the word bedizen. What does bedizen mean? Does it mean A, to dress or adorn in a showy, gaudy or tasteless manner? Or B, cheerful silliness and light-hearted behaviour? Well done, everybody. Let's move on to number seven, uh, which is the correct usage of regnant. Now, regnant is another word for royal. And uh, would you, you it's, it's an adjective, I should add, and usually an adjective does go before a noun. So would you use this particular word as queen regnant or regnant queen? Over to you. Is it A or B? Okay, a range of guesses there. Um, we will have the answer shortly. So on to number eight, highfalutin. This is a great word. It sounds fabulous, highfalutin. So what does highfalutin mean? Does it mean pompous or pretentious? That's A. Or B, having a royal bloodline. <laughs> Okay, well 
done, everybody. And I like it when there's not a general consensus. That makes me think it's not too easy for you all. There's a mixture of answers. On to number nine. The product was blank and that created many problems. What is the best fit for that blank? Is it A, imperishable or B, cyclical? Imperishable or cyclical? Don't worry if you're late, welcome. Okay, and on to the last question of the second round, number 10. What is the suffix and prefix used with the word inexpungible? Now, we don't, we don't focus too much on the suffix or prefix. It's not a grammar class in club vocab, but it can help our decoding of what a word means, how we break it down. So can you find the suffix and prefix for this particular word? <laughs> Okay, well done everybody. Um, most, if not all of you, are right in the chat, so that's that's good. Uh, right, okay, it's time to move into the breakout rooms. You'll be with different people this time, and in your breakout room you can discuss your answers and also what you think this word means. Insipid. Now, you'll probably notice on your worksheet there's a space that says uh, discovery choice. Um, you can write what you think the definition for these words are in that section there. I slightly changed um, the uh, breakout room activity when I realised there were lots of you who hadn't been to Club Vocab before, so I wanted to make it more inclusive for you. So, breakout rooms, insipid, what does it mean? The rooms are now open, you've got just over a minute. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back from your breakout rooms. Um, if you were looking at the screen then, you might have seen a flash of the answers for half a second. Um, but before we get to the answers, just a reminder, if you let me know if somebody did a great job in your breakout room, then I will give them a big, re really big well done. Um, we'll start with Fletcher who said, Andrea was brilliant in capital letters as well. So you must have been great, Andrea. Um, and Cushy says, Jaden did a great job. Jaden says, well done, Cushy and Ishal and Aish. Um, Ishal and Aish said, Jaden and Cushy. It sounds like your breakout room. Everyone got on really well. That's great. And, um, and, and Jaden says, Jaden. Well done, Jaden. Well done to you. 
Okay, let's get some answers. So here they are. Number six, the answer was A, to dress or adorn in a showy, gaudy or tasteless manner. So that was the word bedizen. It's a verb, to bedizen yourself. Uh, number seven, the answer was A, queen regnant. Now what's quite interesting about the adjective regnant is that um, unlike other adjectives that usually go before a noun, it goes after the noun when we're talking about the queen. So the queen regnant. Eight, the answer was A, pompous or pretentious. Um, number nine was A, imperishable. Number ten was inexpungible, prefix in and suffix ible. So well done if you were able to take those two um, sections of the word apart. And when you're decoding, if you can take those away and find a root word, you've got a better chance of working out what the word might mean. And finally, insipid. Insipid means lacking flavour, weak or tasteless, and also lacking any interest. Has anyone been on an insipid school trip before? I know I have. Okay, so lots of you are saying you got five out of five. That's amazing. Or Fletcher got six out of six. So you can include um, the insipid in that. <laughs> well done. Okay, well done to everybody. You're all making me laugh today. <laughs> um, right, okay, let's move on <coughs> to number 11. Efficacious means A, fickle and unsettling, movable, or B, successful in producing a desired effect or in a desired and intended result, effective. A or B? The chat is really active this evening, which is great. I hope you're all writing your answers down on the sheet as well. <laughs> okay, number 12. The policy was not nearly blank enough to be approved. Now, what does the blank best fit? Is it A, mitigation, or B, tenderfoot? Two words from the week we looked at vocabulary linked to greener living and sustainability. I don't know if you're all jumping on the bandwagon of that one together. Okay, number 13. Imperious means A, arrogant and domineering, or B, selfish and greedy. Similar descriptions there, similar definitions, but which one is the definition of imperious? Right, let's see. Well, I think it looks like everybody is in, agree in agreement here. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to number 14. Which of these words means lacking real amusement and typically expressing irony? Is it A, mirthless, or B, disconsolate? Okay, on to number 15, the last question ah! in the Club Vocab Half-Term voc Vocabulary Quiz. Gosh, second time round and I still couldn't say it in one go. Right, what is the mark above the A in chateau called? 
what do we call that little mark, that little sort of bridge looking thing? Is it A, circumflex, and or B, archiflex? Uh, so the word chateau comes from the French word for, well, it's a French word that means um, a castle or a large sort of country home. And that little bridge, is it a circumflex or an archiflex? It is that time now to go into our final breakout room of the quiz. You'll be with different people this time once again. Might be someone from a previous room, who knows. Um, I randomly recreate and allocate them every time. So every time you go in there you can discuss your answers and the word I want you to try and work out the meaning of is evocative. Evocative. You might have an idea of what this word means but when you go into your breakout room you'll be able to decide together and come up with a definition. So you've got just over one minute. The rooms are now open. Off you go. breakout rooms so you know the drill who did a great job let me know in the chat and whilst you're sharing who did a great job I will share the answers so here we have it uh, number 11 the answer was B successful in producing a desired or intended result effective and that's the word efficacious 12 the answer was mitigation you might need to look up what the word mitigate means number 13 the answer was A, arrogant and domineering, so it was imperious. Number 14, the word was A, mirthless, means uh, lacking in amusement. And, uh, oh my gosh, I've written the wrong answer for 15. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I've, come, I've done that. So 15, the answer is actually A, circumflex, not B, archiflex. Archiflex is a word I made up when I put the quiz together, it's not even a thing. <laughs> And uh, evocative is a word that means bringing strong images, memories or feelings to mind. So there you have it. What did you get for round three? You can give yourself a score out of five or you can include uh, the group one as well if you want to. And that would be out of six. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that I put archiflex. I don't even know what an archiflex is. It's definitely a circumflex, the little... Um, little sort of pointy bridge above the A. Okay, right. Uh, so I almost missed who did a great job, so I'm going to whiz back and see if I can uh, find out. Um, 
So, Jaden says, well done, Isa and Andrea. Sophie says, well done, Fletcher. Isa says, well done, Camilla, Andrea and Jaden. Cushy says, Hayang did a great job. Fletcher says, Mariam was great. Uh, fabulous. Well done to all of you. Well done. Okay, some really good scores coming through as well. So that brings us to the end of the half-term vo vocabulary quiz based on the last five weeks of club vocab. Well done, you did it. So what did you score out of 30? Now you could score yourself out of 33 if you're including the group words that you did. So you'd get 15 points or marks for the vocabulary round or 18 if you include the group words and 15 for effort. So you can give yourself 15 for 15, 15 out of 15 for effort, and then you can give yourself uh, your other marks too. Isa got 30 out of 30, Isa, well done. Uh, excellent. Oh, Sophie, you're so welcome. Camilla got 10 out of 15. That's really good, Camilla, really good. Um, Fletcher got 32 out of 33. I thought, <laughs> I thought he said 32 out of 30. I was gonna say, wow, that was, um, <laughs> that's a good score so uh, that's it for the the quiz don't forget though you can come and join me for club vocab next half term we start back in two weeks there's an early bird discount that finishes tonight so if you want to come tonight and you want to save your parents or your adults 10 pounds they can book before midnight and uh, you can also come and join me tomorrow for the Jubilee Spellathon 10 a.m. tomorrow over on Instagram live so you can ask your parents if they've got Instagram um, these spellings are on my social media platforms, but I will uh, reshare them again this evening. So if anyone wants to practice ahead of tomorrow, they can. Right, that's it. You've all been absolutely fabulous. Well done. <laughs>